Hello everyone. Today, me and my team are going to be presenting solution for climate change. Atmospheric temperature is rising faster. Get ready for a worldwide disaster. Today, we'll be covering what is the project objective, what problems are we going to solve, what is the process, and what are the solutions. The objective of the goals project is to try and eradicate all the problems that we face on Earth by the year 2030. In 2015, world leaders agreed to 17 global goals, officially known as the Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. It is now six years on and we have, a more, we have more work than ever to do. These goals have the power to create a better world by 2030 by ending poverty, fighting inequality and addressing the urgency of climate change. Guided by the goals, it is now up to all of us, the students who are the future of the planet, to make the world a better place for us and the future generations. The world is choking on smoke. In the year 2015, there were approximately 9 million deaths. In 2016, approximately 4.2 million deaths. In 2017, approximately 8.3 million deaths. In 2018, approximately 6.1 million deaths. And in 2019, there were approximately 1.67 million deaths. Climate change problems to solve, rising temperatures, foods, droughts, etc., increased carbon footprints, increased fire threats like bushfires and wildfires. Air pollution. This chart represents the air pollution, which is the silent killer. Every year, around 7 million deaths are due to the exposure from both outdoor and household air pollution, which causes stroke, heart diseases, lung cancer, and etc. Over 2 million deaths have occurred in Southeast Asia region, over 2 million in Western Pacific region, nearly 1 million in the African region, about 500,000 deaths in the Eastern Mediterranean region, about 500,000 deaths in the European region, more than 300,000 deaths in the region of America. What is the process? To be able to contribute to all these goals, we can all start by doing small things like turn off the lights, close doors immediately so heat does not escape, take short showers, walk or bike if you can instead of having your parents drive you, turn off your computer when you're not, in, when you're not using it, and don't leave it on just to keep Facebook or MySpace active. Making simple choices to save energy may help avoid serious consequences of global warming. Uh, convince the people around you to save energy. Replace incandescent with fluorescent lights. This saves a lot of money. The car running needlessly. For example, when waiting to pick you up at school. Recycle. This saves energy in manufacturing. Run the dishwasher and other appliances on energy saver mode. Keep the house at 68 degrees Fahrenheit or less and make sure the heat goes off at night. Start a conversation at, uh, at school to raise awareness. Get your fellow students and teachers on board to have the school reduce energy consumption. How to stop rising temperatures, global warming. Global warming includes both climate change driven by human emissions of greenhouse gases and the resulting large scale shifts in weather patterns. Though there have been previous periods of climatic change since the mid um, 20th century, humans have had unprecedented impact on Earth's climate system and caused change on a global scale. The largest driver of warming is the emission of greenhouse gases, of which more than 90% are carbon dioxide, CO2, and methane. Fossil fuel burning, coal, oil, and gas for energy consumption is the main source of these emissions, with additional contributions from agriculture, deforestation, and industrial processes. The human cause of climate change is not dispu disputed by any scientific body of national or international standing. Temperature rise is accelerated or tempered by climate feedback such as loss of sunlight reflecting snow and ice cover, increased water vapor, a greenhouse gas itself, and changes to the land and ocean, uh, land and ocean carbon sinks. Temperature, this uh, picture shows you the temperature change in the last 50 years. A few ways from which we can prevent these are reduce, reuse, recycle. Recycle your clothes. Bring your own shopping bags. Replace regular incandescent light bulb. Buy energy efficient appliances. 
Turn off electrical devices. Go solar. Use less hot water. Use clean fuel. Look for renewable fuel options. Save energy. Replace filters on air conditioner on air conditioner and furnace. Go green. Plant a tree. Use cloth line to dry your clothes. Plant your vegetable garden. Conserve water. Reduce food waste. Don't drink bottled water. Eat naturally. Use a kitchen cloth instead of paper towels. Reuse towels. Avoid products with a lot of packaging. Stop idly using your uh, car. Drive less or carpool. Ride your bike instead of using a vehicle. Become aware of your contribution. Spread the awareness. Floods and droughts. Here's a brief explanation of what causes floods and droughts. What causes floods? Floods occur most the uh, most commonly from heavy rain fall when natural water courses do not have the capacity to carry excess water. In coastal areas, water inundation can be caused by a storm surge as a result of a tropical cyclone, a tsunami, or a high tide coinciding with higher than normal river levels. What causes droughts? Droughts have many causes. It can be caused by not receiving rain or snow over a period of time. If you live in a place where most of the uh, water you use comes from a river, a drought in your area can be caused by places upstream from you not receiving enough moisture. Measures including small barriers in ditches and fields or notches cut into the embankments to divert the water into open land, letting the pools form outside the main channel of a river means. The water is temporarily removed from the main flow, reducing the power of the flood waters. Here's an image that shows that. How can we prevent droughts? Choose a water efficient irrigation system such as drip irrigation for your trees, shrubs and flowers. Turn the irrigation down in fall and off in winter. Put a layer of mulch around trees and plants to reduce evaporation and keep soil cool. Mulch also helps in conservation of soil moisture, improving fertility and health of the soil, reducing weed growth and enhancing the visual appeal of the area. Um, there's a picture attached of drip irrigation system. Increased carbon footprints. So what is a carbon footprint? No, it is not a literal footprint made out of carbon. A carbon footprint is, a amount, is the amount of greenhouse gases, primarily carbon dioxide, released into the atmosphere by a particular human activity. A carbon footprint can be a broad measure or be applied to the actions of an individual, a family, an event, an organization, or even an entire nation. So how can we erase our carbon footprint? The easiest way to do this is by planting new forests, a forestation, and restoring old ones, reforestation. Other en enhanced land management practices can help, as, as can new technologies that suck CO2 out of the air, direct air capture, or prevent it from leaving smoke shacks, carbon, carbon capture, and storage. What are the five R's? There's another way by which we can erase our carbon footprint from home. Sounds cool, right? It's actually really simple. Just follow the five R's. I'm sure all of you would have heard of the three R's. Let's see what are the five R's. Refuse. Avoid using avoid using single-use plastics and paper products by saying no thank you, opting for reusables. Reduce downsize what you purchase, opting to be more mindful of what you really need. Reuse. Always find a way to keep an item out of the landfill by keeping it in a great condition, repairing or upcycling when it breaks. Rot. Set up a compost system for your food scraps, drop off center scrap, drop off center, like farmer's uh, market or community garden near your house. Recycle. Properly recycle any plastic, paper, glass, or metal that comes into your life. You cannot refuse, reduce, or reuse by researching your state's recycling laws. Increased by threat wildfires. What exactly are wildfires? A wildfire is an uncontrolled fire that burns in the wildland vegetation, often in rural areas. Wildfires can burn in vegetation located both in and above the soil. Ground fires typically ignite in soil thick with organic matter that can feed the flames, like plant roots. Solution to prevent wildfires. Vegetation cleared from forests to lessen the risk of wildfire, such as these branches, can yield renewable energy, a potential source of revenue to help prevent the fires. There are largely untapped economic opportunity in the forest. Reducing the risk of fire often involves removing vegetation that can fuel fires. 
Here's the wildfire image. Increased fire threat bushfires. Example, bushfires in Australia are a widespread and regular occurrence that have contributed significantly to shape the nature of the continent over a million of years. Eastern Australia is one of the most fire-prone regions of the world, and its predominant eucalyptus forests have evolved to thrive on the phenomenon of bushfire. However, these fires can cause significant property damage and loss of both human and animal life. Bushfires have killed approximately 800 people in Australia since 1851 and billions of animals. Solution for bushfires. Regularly mowing the grass and raking up leaves. Removing weeds and pruning bushes and trees. Keeping garden beds moist through mulching or other non-flammable um, ground covers like pebbles. Regularly clearing leaves from gutters, roofs, down pipes, and around the base of trees. Maintaining a well-watered lawn, complying with water restrictions. Storing flammable, um, storing flammable or combustible materials such as wood piles and rubbish away from your house. Thank you uh, for listening to our presentation today. We hope you liked it.